JD, and this week on NASA Now, we'll explore the clouds when we take a ride on NASA's A-Train. But before we get to that, let's find out what else is happening at NASA Now. <laughs> NASA's Aqua Satellite recently flew over an erupting volcano in Russia, capturing a visible image of its ash plume. The volcano, one of Russia's most active, spewed a cloud of ash over six miles high into the atmosphere. A combination of bad weather and technical difficulties caused the launch of STS-133 to be delayed until the end of November. Keep an eye on NASA Now for mission updates. Now we'll take a look back at the past. 50 years ago, the world's first weather satellite lifted off from Cape Canaveral, Florida. The satellite, known as Tyros-1, not only produced vast improvements in weather forecasts, it also laid the foundation for our current global view of Earth that underlies all climate research. Clouds play a critical role in Earth's energy and water cycles, and ultimately in Earth's climate. Understanding the impact of all kinds of clouds is key to predicting how Earth's climate will change in the future. Here to tell us about one of NASA's missions in this area is Dr. Lynn Chambers. My name is Lynn Chambers, and I am a physical scientist here at NASA Langley Research Center. The A-Train is a series of satellites that are in orbit together, going around the Earth within a few minutes of each other. So right now there are four satellites in that A-Train, and they all um, pass over the equator at about 1.30 p.m. local time within a 15-minute time period. The A-Train um, is focusing a lot on atmospheric processes, but it's not just that. The A-Train also looks at surface processes, it looks at ocean processes, ice sheets, ice caps, that kind of thing. So it really does look across the entire Earth. How to keep the satellites from running into each other is actually a really good question. As you can imagine, they're moving pretty quick. They're going around the Earth in about a 90-minute time period. They all communicate independently down to the ground, and so there's a very good spacecraft operations team on the ground that keeps an eye on the satellites basically 24 hours a day, monitoring the orbits and making sure that everything is lined up. The CloudSat satellite is the first satellite to carry a cloud radar into space, and that lets you do a couple things that are really crucial. One, it lets you look at night, and two, it lets you look through the clouds. So most of the time they can get all the way down to the surface, and they can get a profile of how much water is in the cloud, what, you know, whether it's ice or liquid, whether it's raining, and where is it. Clouds affect Earth's climate in several ways. One thing you can't have without clouds is you can't have rain, and, and that's pretty key to life. The other thing in terms of the energy budget, if we had a planet much like it is now but without clouds, the Earth would be about 20 degrees warmer because the clouds are reflecting sunlight and emitting heat to space in such a way that they actually cool the planet pretty substantially. The atmosphere on the Earth is really crucial for a lot of reasons. One, we need to be able to breathe, that's kind of important. Two, the ozone layer in the atmosphere shields us from the harmful ultraviolet rays, so if we didn't have that, we'd all be in big trouble, including plants. Three, the Earth's atmosphere provides a natural greenhouse effect that actually makes the temperature of our Earth um, within a livable range. So if we did not have an atmosphere, the Earth would be frozen. The school project is a project that we have students on the ground who do observations of clouds in the atmosphere at the time that the spacecraft is going over their location. 
and then they report that data to us, we match it up with what the satellite sees over that same location, and the students can do some comparisons of what they saw from their point of view compared to what the satellite sees from the top. So it's really important to understand where those clouds are and what kind of clouds they are. And for students on the ground, um, that's both part of their curriculum, and it's also something that they can easily do and then transfer to us. Did you know that NASA currently has more than a dozen Earth science spacecraft and instruments in orbit studying all aspects of the Earth system? Today we learn how CloudSat and other Earth observation satellites are being used to help identify and examine clouds. Now it's your turn. Take a look at these exciting resources and activities on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. This week, you and your teammates can visit the Globe Cloud Exploration website to learn about different cloud types and test your knowledge. Later, you can help NASA scientists by submitting your observations online through the school website. To access these resources and activities, visit the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Join us again next week when we'll take another ride on the A-Train to explore Earth systems. We'll see you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.